you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Deacon Abby B., and I serve at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Wednesday of the third Sunday after Pentecost, Proper Six. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the Church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. At this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear? each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others had sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved." Here ends the lesson. This reading is well known for the Feast of Pentecost, or what sometimes is called the birthday of the Church. The Feast of Pentecost comes 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. This Jewish feast was one of the three times a year that Jews were required to go to the Temple. Originally, it was known as the Feast of First Fruits. It later became the feast associated with the giving of the law to Moses. There were Jews from every area visiting Jerusalem, hence the many languages people heard. The disciples were there because Jesus, before his ascension, ordered them to stay in Jerusalem, telling them he would be sending someone to them, which we know is the Holy Spirit. This isn't the first time God has used the gift of languages to accomplish His purpose in the world. Let's look at an Old Testament story where God used language, His purpose, at a time when humans had a different purpose. 
In the Old Testament story from the book of Genesis, the people of Shinar in Mesopotamia gathered to build a tower using a new discovery, bricks. The people wanted to build a tower as tall as the heavens to show God the glory of their accomplishments. The aim was to glorify themselves and in a way show off before God. Their hearts and minds were on their accomplishments, in other words, idols of their own making. God, however, frustrated the people by changing their speech into languages that no one could understand, babble. The crowd did not understand the languages or babbling and were frustrated in their efforts to show off before God. The tower they built, what we call the Tower of Babel, is a symbol of how God frustrated their efforts because it was built for their own glory and not for God's. In looking at today's lesson, the crowds were gathered for the Feast of Pentecost. God sent His Holy Spirit to this group, and each person in the room received this gift, described as a whirling windrush and flaming tongues of fire. A tongue of flame rested on each person there. God put into them words in many languages so that the crowd gathered outside could hear of God's great deeds and wonders. Foreigners could understand God's message in their own language and bring that message back to their home countries. When we go our way and not God's way, we often fall off into the ditch, a ditch filled with our own thoughts and desires. When that happens, things begin to fall apart. But when we listen to the Holy Spirit speaking in us and our hearts are turned toward God, He will give us words that He wants us to share, sometimes to exactly the person who needs to hear them. The Word of God from the Holy Spirit given to each of us can reach out farther than we can imagine. The glory we proclaim and share is not our own glory, but glory that rightly belongs to God. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays, 8 or 9.30 on Sunday mornings, or 12.15 on Wednesdays, which includes anointing for healing. If you are unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all our offerings.